Okay, uh, hello everyone. I hope you can uh, hear me. I hope you can see my presentation. Uh, so as Michel said, I'm going to tell a bit more about security of your build and deployment environment. So this is not an application security topic uh, as such, but it is very closely linked to application security. So I think that it's worth spreading the message uh, to all security people and developers uh, who are uh, members of this OWASP community. Uh, so uh, Michel already provided an introduction uh, of, of, of myself. Uh, however, what I think is important, just two more things to add. So I'm a DevSecOps practitioner. So I believe that uh, developers' freedom and security can go well together. Uh, however, uh, freedom doesn't mean that everyone can go uh, happily without any security controls, I still believe that the developer's freedom requires some security controls uh, just to make sure that our ultimate product is secure and its integrity is on the right level. Uh, I'm also a head of application security in a global company. However, what's important to mention that opinions which uh, I'm presenting today are my own. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can just check my Twitter and Medium account. Uh, my handle is security KSL, uh, and I will be also sharing my presentation there. My presentation has a lot of hyperlinks with it, within it, so if you believe that uh, you are interested in them, just feel free to go there and, and, and check the presentation. Uh, so just a bit of background why I'm even presenting on that topic. Uh, the reason is very simple. So historically, uh, we had uh, a very well defined change management process. So it all started with change being requested, then we had some sign offs, we had some security reviews, then the change was obviously developed by a group of, of developers, uh, then uh, we had a build process, peer review process, a lot of tests from, from different angles, so security, QA, unit test, integration test, UATs, and so on. And only after all these steps were completed, uh, we uh, went to our trusted administrator and we, we asked him or her to move this change to environment of our choice. So it was either QA or pre-production or production, dependent on, the, on, on, on our process. However, what is important that this process was very well structured with a lot of manual or semi-manual work. However, in agile change management, management process, it's a bit different. The reason is that we rely a lot of, on automation because we have a lot of changes which are happening frequently. So we can no longer uh, rely on the sign-offs, manual reviews, and so on. Uh, we implement all of these things inside our pipeline, and we believe that our pipeline will do a good job for us. So currently, CI tool of your choice will do a lot of things for us, like testing, security testing, and some other things as well. It can also deploy things to production environment or any other environment of your choice. Obviously, that strictly depends on your organization risk appetite. So how do we make sure that our application is secure? So in this traditional model, it was relying heavily on the step that every process is manually reviewed, there is a sign off, that some folks from security or some business user will tell you, okay, that is something I approve, please proceed with that change. And we also rely on the fact that we have this trusted administrator who knows exactly what he or she should be doing, and he moves the change to production uh, environment uh, without any, any, any uh, let's say, without any problems. Now, in Agile DevOps, it's, it's a bit different because uh, most of the time we have everything as a code. So our code is our, let's say, count jewel in this configuration, because if we can change the code, you can pretty much impact not only your application, but also the environment and even the uh, pipeline configuration. So we need to rely on the thing that code is reviewed. So no unauthorized change are introduced, that tools can detect security issues or some other uh, developers mistakes. And that process is fully repeat repeatable. So every build and every deployment is exactly the same. And probably the most important thing that humans do not have a direct uncontrolled access 
to the environments. Because obviously, if we are building that thing, and if we want our process to be fully repeatable, we cannot really uh, introduce humans to it, because simply humans make things manual, and there is a chance that the, the, they will uh, do this process a bit differently. So jumping to the main uh, reason why I'm discussing this topic today is that obviously, if you can bypass or circumvent any of these steps, which you can see in the violet box, we have a problem. Because if we are able to circumvent any of the steps, uh, malicious insider or some developer who is not that familiar with security can basically impact the final shape and security posture of our application by modifying uh, its, its configuration. So what is the problem statement? Is that uh, for the last couple of years, we've focused a lot on the topics related to security inside the pipeline. So all the tools like SAS, DAST, SCA, and so on. But it seems that we had a lot of situations when the pipeline itself wasn't properly secured. So when I started, let's say, researching a bit on that topic, I called some of, some of my friends who are also in, in security industry, and I asked them, look, do you know any guideline how to secure a pipeline properly? And you know, all the all the answers which I received were something like, ah, you know, you just need to limit the permissions, you just need to enable logging, and and that was pretty much it, right? So by that time, there was no guideline how you should secure the pipeline properly and what are the things that you should care of. What is even worse is that some of uh, teams, some of companies, they would do a configuration review, for example, of your CI component in the pipeline. But the problem is that it only gives a false sense of security simply because you are reviewing only one of the multiple components of your entire pipeline, right? So you are, for example, reviewing your CI tool, not paying enough attention to your SCM tool, to your, uh, I don't know, cloud environment where you're going to deploy it, or to your artifact management system. So if you go to Google, and if you Google CI CD pipeline security, that's pretty much how it looked like. So in early 2020, it was very hard to find something about that topic. So you can only find some few articles here and there, just briefly touching that topic or different uh, areas of that topic. Later on, it became more and more popular. Uh, and probably starting from Q1 2021, it became even more popular after SolarWinds attack, when people uh, realized that security of the pipeline and integrity of all the artifacts is extremely important, simply because CICD pipeline uh, can impact the ultimate shape and ultimate security posture of your, uh, of your product, of your application. So currently, we have a lot of uh, articles, tools, guidelines, which can give us some information. So even recently, a couple of new ones like Salsa or Cyber, cyber Supply Chain Risk Management Practices from NIST. Uh, that is something which is definitely worth having a look at. Uh, however, they are still quite high level. And what I'm planning to show in that presentation uh, is some of the actual things which you can do right away and you can implement in your organization pretty much next week. So I think that the uh, question that we need to ask ourselves is what can go wrong? So what are the components of, let's say, software development uh, tool chain and what bad can happen for each and every of them? Uh, this is a picture which is coming actually from that Salsa uh, framework, which I totally recommend you to, to, to read because it also gives a nice uh, perspective of what are the threats. But as you can see here, uh, people from Salsa standard, they presented some high level threats at each stage of uh, software uh, development uh, tool chain. So, now we can discuss because you can tell me, look, but my pipeline or my tool chain looks a bit different because I'm relying on cloud or I'm using CloudFormation or uh, Terraform or, or Ansible or whatever else. However, these threads are quite common uh, across all of these tools. 
So starting with the with the very first one, uh, with the first problem, which impacts all the uh, components in, in, in CI/CD pipeline, uh, it's lack of basic security hygiene, which means that we are running the tools which are extremely important and extremely critical, which have access to multiple systems of our organization, but we forget about some really basic security measures like patching the systems properly, like enforcing uh, multi-factor authentication, we are exposing the systems to the internet, uh, we are not monitoring them properly, and so on and so forth. The problem is that if any of these uh, components like SCM or CI tool gets compromised, we have a huge problem because if we are uh, relying uh, on everything as a code approach, if someone has unrestricted access to our SCM tool, this person can literally introduce the changes on our production environment. Same for CI tool. If we are running a CI tool, usually your CI tool will have access to some of your secrets. This might be secrets to your QA or dev environment, but if attacker is lucky enough, he can get also secrets to production environment. So if we are not protecting the systems adequately, we may have a huge problem. Uh, what is even more problematic is that some of the systems, some of, some of the well-known tools uh, in the past were not that secure by default. So if some of you have worked as a penetration tester or rep teamer in the past, you probably know that one of the first things you will be looking for is an unsecured Jenkins instance running in, in environment because it was quite popular thing for companies to do to run a Jenkins instance without any authentication in place, which pretty much results in remote code execution by default. Now it looks a little bit better, but as you can see, uh, creating a setting where anyone can do anything is still something you can configure, right? So if I can recommend you one thing, just please have a look what's your uh, CI2 configuration just to avoid it. So what are the recommendations here? Obviously, security hardening and basic security hygiene. So each of the main CI tools, but also SCM tools, usually gives you some recommendations how you should secure it adequately. So I include a couple of hyperlinks here uh, for Jenkins, for GitLab, for GitHub, and so on. But most of the well-known uh, software uh, development tools gives uh, similar uh, recommendations. If they don't, just please uh, use some your, your your security instinct, right? So you should you shouldn't probably expose it in an unprotected way to the internet, and you should not uh, make everyone an administrator. The second problem or the second group of problems is lack of branch protection mechanism if you're in your software uh, source code management tool. So what is branch protection mechanism? It's basically a mechanism which allows you to enforce certain rules in your source code management tool. So one of the, one of the rules which you may want to enforce, and I would totally recommend you to do so, is that every uh, pull request to your master branch or some other branch which basically uh, triggers your pipeline needs to be reviewed before it's merged. So obviously the reason for that is that you want to make sure that no uh, single developer can introduce changes directly to the production environment. Okay, so that's the, that's the high level idea here that you just want you just want to be sure that uh, developers cannot modify the your production environment in uh, in uncontrolled way. Okay, just a second. Okay, so that's it. Uh, sorry for all the noises. My kids are running around, and that's a, a bit of a mess. Uh, so uh, next thing, which is also quite important here, is that. What you can do is, first of all, you can go to, uh, uh, let's say, your uh, documentation and have a look how you can enable these things. But what you can also do uh, is you can, for example, use uh, some of the tools which can perform these checks for you. 
So for example, you can go to a GitHub app, uh, which is known as All-Star, which allows you to enforce uh, certain rules on your organization level. And again, I included some hyperlinks here, which you can just visit and you can just uh, enforce this, this rules. Uh, next thing is about principle of list privilege, which is not followed. So again, one of the basic things when it comes to security, however, it's not that well known when it comes to uh, software development tools. What is the reason for that? The reason is that developers, they like to have a lot of freedom. They like to run with highest uh, per permissions possible so they can fix the problems why they occur. The problem is that if we have very broad permissions, uh, on the in our systems in our software development tool chain, basically we are uh, having a problem that people can do whatever they want, and then they then they they can bypass all of the things uh, which we defined previously. So, for example, when we are speaking about this branch protection mechanism, uh, if someone is running uh, with administrator permissions on your SCM tool, this pers person can simply disable it. Same applies to every other component which you have in place. So again, some examples. Uh, if someone has excessive permission on CI tool, this person can literally modify uh, all, the, um, all of the configuration and start deploying insecure applications to, to your production environment. And what is uh, even worse than that, probably this person can have unrestricted access to secrets to which your CI tool has access to. Uh, same for cloud infrastructure. So why are we even securing the pipeline and why, we, why are we even discussing pipeline security if we have developers with full access to your uh, cloud infra? So that's yet another question that you need to ask yourself and basically ensure that if you are securing your pipeline, you're not giving any other possibility to bypass it. For artifact management tool, again, it's the very same case that we had previously so we have our pipeline. We are doing a lot of stuff to ensure that our uh, images and our artifacts are built securely. And if we have excessive permissions there, people can pretty much bypass everything we defined and they can start uploading their own artifacts. So again, what are the recommendations here? Basic security hygiene and least privilege principle everywhere. So probably if you are some big organization, uh, you don't want to give everyone administrator permissions on your uh, SCM tool. You don't want uh, people to have full access to your CI tool and similarly with any other tool. So it, it's especially important for, for developers. So these developers, they shouldn't have access to, to the tools uh, so they cannot really bypass things which we defined there. Uh, if there is a need to have an uh, emergency access, obviously uh, you can create a procedures to do it, but you can also use some tools. Uh, so if uh, um, emergency access is required, that is still possible. Uh, again, uh, at the bottom of the slide, I, I included a couple of hyperlinks, which you can find interesting, uh, as they are also providing some more details how you can implement that and what is important. Uh, Next thing is about improper segregation. So it's a bit related to what we discussed in the previous section, uh, but it's uh, more specific to CI tool permission. So what is the idea here? That you need to pay special attention how you segregate between workspaces, between projects, or between different environments, not only in your cloud infrastructure, but also in your CI tool. So what is the reason for that? Again, the reason is simple. So if there is a situation that you're running a single workspace and then in this workspace, you're configuring your pipelines to all your environments, you are gonna have a huge problem because most of the times or for certain tools, it means that people are able to reach secrets for higher environments. So for example, if you are not segregating uh, access properly, uh, your developer will be able to reach uh, secrets from your production and deploy to production automatically. So uh, 
If you don't believe that's true, again, just go to one of these two links, which I'm sharing at the bottom of the slide, because these attacks are really happening. So they're especially uh, problematic when we are having a configuration where we uh, run a pipeline on a pull request, because it's common in organization just to run a pipeline on pull request to verify if code created by developer is building successfully. So if we have the situation that we are executing pipeline on pull request and we have a situation that we are uh, storing our, all, all the, let's say, secrets in a single bucket, person with, with who can run pull request can literally execute codes in our environments. So again, recommendations here, just please make sure that you're segregating access uh, to, to the environments that you're, uh, again, it can be done by having multiple workspaces. It can be done by restricting permissions. Some of the CI tools have also a way how to how, how you can, uh, let's say, give only access to specific secrets, to specific pipelines. So basically, you have multiple options. You can do it. But just please make sure that you uh, uh, that you are aware of the problem and you can configure it uh, however you like. And also, if you are running this uh, configuration when you are executing the pipeline on pull request, again, just please reconsider that idea. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that please be aware that it's risky. So please make sure that your configuration is is, is protecting you from from this kind of attacks where someone runs some fantastic code and is able to reach your uh, production environments. Uh, last but not least, lack of integrity checks. So again, uh, what we would like to achieve here is we want to make sure that the code that developer created in the very first step and which has been reviewed by his colleague is the same code which is going to run on the production environment. So basically, we want to make sure that we have some checks in place uh, which will uh, basically ensure that only uh, this tested code is run on production. Uh, obviously, these are some threats which you can see. So for example, we are creating an artifact, but then someone decides to upload some other artifact manually and run this artifact in our production environment. So we want to make sure that this is not happening. And that is why we need something which is called uh, provenance. So if you want to know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting concept and you should definitely check, for example, some standards and frameworks like salsa.dev. So that is a link which I'm including at the bottom of the slide. But the idea is that during the build process, uh, we generate so-called provenance, which is pretty much a confirmation that this thing was built in a trusted uh, CI, in a trusted tool. And it also gives some information what steps were uh, conducted during the build. So what we can do on top of that, we can also sign that provenance and store it in a trusted location. And then when we are deploying this artifact to production environment, we can create a simple mechanism which is going to verify the signature and allow the deployment only if it's coming from the trusted source. So basically, if someone would like to bypass the, um, the pipeline and upload something from a trusted source, it's going to be impossible. So simple as that. Again, this is a huge topic. It's a very broad topic, uh, but some of the hyperlinks in the bottom of your page can help you to, uh, to get more familiar with it. Uh, so that's it. Uh, just a couple of things which I want to, to mention. So first of all, security of the pipeline is as important as security in the pipeline. Uh, security of your pipeline in your company, in your organization might be a bit different because obviously it depends on your organization size, on your risk appetite, or size of your development team, and on a lot of other factors. So basically you can tell me, look, Martin, what you presented today uh, is, you know, it's not for me because the size of my team is limited to five people. That's fine, but you can still use some of the recommendations which are provided in this presentation. But if you have a huge organization uh, controlled or which is a subject to some external regulations, you may want to consider implementing more and more of these recommendations. Uh, what is also important is that 
I would totally recommend to start with the basics, but then aim for the moon, which means that it's very unlikely that you are going to deploy all of the things uh, over the weekend. So as a first step, I would probably recommend you to think about basic security hygiene. And only if you have that, if you are protecting yourselves from external threats, you should focus on the internal threats. So if you are, if you believe that you are secure from all the uh, attackers which are there on the internet, that is good enough as a first step. And only then you can also think about all the other things which we discussed today. Uh, so that's it. Uh, again, I will be sharing this uh, slides on uh, Twitter and probably on my LinkedIn. So if you are interested, if you would like to check some of the hyperlinks, uh, please uh, visit it uh, and, and and have a look. And I'm also waiting for all your questions uh, on our Slack channel.